Jim, the Ape One Crew. Hello again, humans. It is I, Jim the Ape, minus one tooth towards the back of my mouth because apparently I need to take better care of the ones I still have. So if there's anything off about my voice, even something subtle and barely noticeable, that's why. Anyway, I wanted to continue in the vein of my last video about the Doom games and make another video about a video game I enjoy, while also working in commentary about social and political issues and responding to controversies surrounding it. I've got a lot of material to get to, so let's cut to the chase. I'm talking about Spider-Man. More specifically, I'm talking about the very recently released video game based on one of my favorite Marvel superheroes that is a PlayStation 4 exclusive because Sony. Now, this is one of those rare videos where I've actually done research. Yes, I have sacrificed the past week or so of my life tirelessly researching this game, spending six consecutive nights after work shifts, mind you, playing this game at an average of about four to five hours a night. Yes, I've spent almost the same amount of time working on researching this video as I have working at my so-called real job over the past week. You're welcome. So it is with that great wealth of knowledge that I now present to you this video, wherein I will examine the new Spider-Man game and look at its political messages as well as respond to some articles about it. And going into this video, it was pretty much a coin flip as far as deciding what to talk about first. But I I think I'm going to start with the already beaten to death horse that is Tom Lay's article entitled, They Turned Spider-Man Into a Damn Cop and It Sucks. First of all, they didn't turn Spider-Man into a damn cop, they turned him into Spider-Cop. Spider-Cop. From his elevated position, Spider-Cop spies his destination, a second surveillance tower. Are you narrating yourself? What? No, of course not. The Chief never did understand Spider-Cop. Thought he was a loose cannon. Spider-Cop's on it. Part man, part spider, all cop. Grizzled veteran of the force with extraordinary abilities and a talent for beating up bad guys. His reluctant partner, Yuri Watanabe, scoffs at his crime-fighting ways, but the two make a perfect team for taking down New York City's most dangerous criminals. Anyway, let's get into the actual article. The new Spider-Man game came out for PlayStation 4 last week, and I was eager to spend a chunk of my weekend playing it. Some things I immensely enjoyed during my first few hours of playtime, web slinging, jumping off buildings, web swinging, whispering, whoa, that looks just like the real Empire State Building, and web swinging. One thing I definitely did not enjoy is how the game turns Spider-Man into a frigging cop. So, all you've been doing is web swinging around the city, which, granted, is fun, but I gotta break it to you, homeboy. There's more to the game than that. And Spider-Man isn't a cop. He's a superhero who works with the cops. You know, they're kind of on the same side of that whole crime is bad thing. Granted, I am only a few hours into the game, but so far, the primary objective boils down to help the cops. Not just any cops, either, but the NYPD, specifically. Because the game the game takes place in a true-to-life rendering of New York City. It's dumb to expect video games to be responsible reflections of real life, but it is also impossible, for me at least, to not feel some ickiness about the game forcing me into cahoots with even a fictionalized version of the NYPD, an organization that routinely oppresses some of the most vulnerable residents of the city I live in. Holy shit, you live in New York City? I thought New Yorkers were supposed to be tough people who have seen everything and aren't faced by shit anymore. Well, regardless, you admit to only having played the game for a few hours at the time of writing this article. I played the entire game before saying word one about it on the internet because I wanted to get all the information from the game's story instead of just making assumptions and then embarrassing myself when said assumptions turn out to be wrong. And just how does the NYPD oppress the most vulnerable people? Last I checked, the people that the cops interact with 
with the most are, you know, criminals. I'm not grasping for as many straws as it may appear. Oh yes you are. Spider-Man doesn't just help the cops by catching armed robbers and putting deranged supervillains in jail. He helps them maintain a high-tech, city-wide surveillance network. One of the ongoing missions in the game is to have Spider-Man repair NYPD-operated and Oscorp-constructed surveillance towers that stand atop various buildings throughout the city. When these towers are repaired, they allow the NYPD to monitor all citizens within a certain radius of the tower, and for Spider-Man to get real-time updates on happenings within the city via an uplink with the towers. Yeah, and if you had paid any attention to the dialogue leading up to that particular side mission, you would know that their system had been hacked. So Spider-Man needed to go around fixing the towers so that criminals couldn't tap into that surveillance system. And yeah, it is a little bit NSA-esque. But do you know what fixing those towers allows Spider-Man to do? Go ahead, just take a guess. Don't know? Oh, I'm sorry, you didn't buzz in on time. The correct answer is that it allows him to STOP CRIMES as they happen. Not just to find and punish the responsible parties after the fact, no, actually catch them in the act of a mugging, armed robbery, assault, etc. This is a game mechanic that will be familiar to anyone who has played an open world RPG in the last decade. What the towers functionally do is reveal areas of the game map to players so that they can find additional missions and collectibles. Yeah, it's the Far Cry formula. But it isn't strictly a game mechanic, it's also a narrative choice, and one that comes with some pretty obvious real-life parallels. The NYPD buying cutting-edge equipment and software from a shady tech company owned by a billionaire with, uh, maniacal tendencies so that it can monitor and collect data on its citizens is a dystopian yet sensible video game plot point. It's also literally something that happened in the real New York City. So, um, are you gonna present any actual evidence that this is happening, or am I just supposed to take your word for it. Because I gotta tell ya, I'm a bit of a skeptic. I don't just accept claims at face value. Was this something that Trump did? What exactly are you talking about here? Spider-Man deserves better than to be allied with such forces. A big part of the character's appeal is that he is just as much under the thumb of the city as the people he tries to help. He's from a shattered family. He works multiple jobs. He can't pay his bills. He's stressed out all the time. He's not a hero who swoops down from on high in order to save the commoners from themselves. He is a commoner. Therein rests everything that is inspiring about the character. He's just a guy who wants to make life better for the people who are dealing with the same struggles he is. Okay, there wasn't really anything too objectionable in that paragraph, but here's the thing. That's exactly why he works with the police and wants to have a good relationship with them. Because they are every bit the blue-collar, hard-working New Yorkers that he is. And the fact that you can see cops as being any Anything other than common human beings is a bit worrisome to me. Because that's exactly the kind of mentality that can get good cops killed out of some misplaced sense of revenge for the actions of the few truly bad cops that make for sensationalist headlines. What this new game does is put Spider-Man on a perch where he doesn't belong. He's no longer performing heroic deeds out of just the goodness of his heart, but also for the purpose of solidifying the existing power structure's grip on the city. Again, this is how the first few hours of the game works, and maybe there is a forthcoming plot twist in which Spider-Man realizes that he no longer wants to be an agent of the state. All I know is that it kind of sucks to play a game in which Spider-Man, in the process of beating up some drug dealers, taunts them by yelling, if you just got real jobs, you wouldn't have to work so hard at being criminals. Exactly. I agree with Spider-Man. And you got part of that right, but it's not really the cops he turns against. If anything, he ends up persuading at least one major NPC cop who is initially against him to change his mind and support his heroic efforts. And he probably does the same thing for several other background NPCs. Now, I don't want to give too much away, but it's really not a surprise to anyone who pays attention to this kind of thing. Basically, in the main story, a big terrorist attack happens at a rally for Mayor Norman Osborne. Don't worry, I'll get to him. So he hires a private military corporation to come into the city to be his personal protection and to hunt down those responsible. I'm sure many of you already know where this is going, even if you haven't played the game. Surprise, surprise, the private military organization turns out to be evil, the city basically falls under martial law, and Spider-Man has to fight the high-tech soldiers who were supposed to at least be on the 
the same side as him. But again, you wouldn't know any of that because you played the game for like two hours and then rage quit because the game didn't immediately vilify and demonize the NYPD, a group of people that you seem to oppose with the same fervor and lack of rationality with which a racist opposes black people, a homophobe opposes gay people, or any other kind of bigot opposes the demographic that they irrationally despise. But we've got another article to cover which should take this discussion in at least a bit of a different direction. This one is from a writer named Emmanuel Myberg, and the page for the article has the Vice logo on it, so reader beware, I suppose. And the article is called, Sony Says Spider-Man Is Not a Murderer. Spoiler alert, he's not. One thing that's interesting and cool about superhero video games is that the most popular superheroes don't kill their enemies. That's how most video games handle conflict resolution. You kill the bad guys. The best example of this is one of my favorite video games, 2016's Doom, in which the Doom Slayer gleefully murders his way to victory, even when more sensible solutions are possible. Okay, stop right there. Are you gonna make me go back to talking about Doom? Because I will, happily. I mean, just check out my previous video. But I'll just say here that there are no more sensible solutions to the events of Doom. The enemies are mindless, feral demons who want to kill all of humanity and conquer our world. The only sensible solution is to brutally murder them all post-haste, which coincidentally is exactly what the Doom Slayer does. Superman, on the other hand, could melt Lex Luthor's head with his eyes, or fly through a hundred henchmen's torsos at the speed of light, chopping them in half, but he he doesn't, because he's an American hero, or whatever. Yeah, play a little game called Injustice, Gods Among Us, and then come back to me and tell me that. The same is true for Marvel's Spider-Man, a PlayStation 4 exclusive we at Motherboard generally liked a lot, and that is already proving to be a huge critical and commercial success. Yeah, and the game is great. I can personally attest to that. Spider-Man's shtick is that he's a cool and friendly New Yorker, which means that, unlike the NYPD, he doesn't choke people to death on the streets of New York City without a trial. He'll mess them up by kicking them in the face, webbing them up to lampposts, and electrifying them until they're unconscious, but he won't outright kill anyone. Still on the Eric Garner thing, are ya? You should hit up the author of that other article. I think you two would get along great. But seriously, I agree that that case was horrible, and it sucks that nothing was done to really get justice for it. But at the same time, I don't hold that against the entire NYPD or against all cops in general. I only hold it against those particular officers who were directly responsible for that shit. Oh, and also I have to point out that he died of a heart attack. He wasn't choked to death. However, now that the game is out and people are playing it, some have expressed concern that Spidey is committing murder. Yeah, and they're wrong. Spider-Man doesn't kill. Now, I'm tempted to go on a huge tangent that would undoubtedly veer so far off topic that some would wonder why it's even in this video when it could be a video all on its own. But I'll just condense it and say that my position on Batman killing or not killing is that in most of the incarnations I have seen and enjoyed, he does kill bad guys, but he does so indirectly, and he does his best to convince himself and others that he doesn't. Think the, I'm not gonna kill you, but I don't have to save you line from Batman Begins. Since Marvel's Spider-Man is all about swinging around Manhattan, much of the game's fights with criminals take place on the roofs of skyscrapers. In these fights, it's actually a good strategy to kick people off the roof, and there are specific combat moves in the game that facilitate tossing bad guys to oblivion. Players can web up bad guys and whip them around their heads in a circle before throwing them off, or punch them high into the air and then swing kick them to hell. Actually, during my countless hours of research for this video, I just so happened to catch the reason why the whole knocking guys off rooftops thing isn't fatal. But I'll let the article get to that. Perhaps not without reason, some players have assumed that when bad guys are thrown off the roof of a skyscraper by a mutant with super strength, they die. I had the same thought when I played the game prior to release. Surely no one is going to survive a fall from the top of the MetLife building. I immediately emailed Sony's public 
relations team to ask, is Spider-Man a murderer? The answer was quick and clear cut. Okay, I don't know if you're trying to humble brag or what, but stop that shit. You're a human being, so I already have a better than decent chance of hating you. Not to mention the fact that you wrote an article on the internet where you're nitpicking a video game, so that doesn't help. And now you've gone and made it worse by saying that you played this awesome game before I could. I think you should check your games journalist privilege, you douchebag. Insomniac, the game's developer, has confirmed that Spider-Man never kills anyone in the game. A Sony representative said he is a protector. For the guys that get thrown off the building, there are contingency animations where they're brought back to safety slash webbed up. I went back into the game to confirm, and Sony's explanation checks out. If you jump down after a bad guy that you just kicked off the roof, you'll see that he will spontaneously be pulled by a web and stuck to a wall before being liquefied on impact with the pavement. That's what I was alluding to a moment ago. I just so happened to catch a glimpse of one of the guys I knocked off of a roof getting automatically webbed to the wall of the building. Up until that point, I had also assumed that those guys were just dead. But unlike this guy, I was perfectly fine with that. It's just a video game after all. It's not real. Good save, Insomniac, but it still doesn't make sense, really. Is Spider-Man attaching a web trip mine, one of the game's many gadgets, to these bad guys with his big toe as he kicks them off the roof? Is the device equipped with a speedometer that activates once these bad guys reach terminal velocity? How does it find a surface to attach to? Actually, I think there's a split-second animation when you knock a guy off of a roof where Spider-Man very quickly shoots a web after him. I seem to remember a few times when I thought I saw him shoot off a web without it being something that I intentionally did. But again, it's just a video game. Not every single little aspect of it has to be explained or depicted realistically. And frankly, if it did, that would suck all the fun right out of it. Also, and I've reported this bug to Sony, I've definitely kicked bad guys off the roofs of shorter buildings, say 5 to 10 stories, and watched them plonk on the sidewalk, at which point they stopped moving. To me, they looked dead. Another player has also shared footage of Spider-Man webbing a bad guy to an armored truck that then explodes. Either or both of those could just be glitches or programming oversights. The game did just launch, after all. Or maybe buildings of those heights wouldn't be fatal to fall from, and they're just knocked out. I'm no expert, but maybe the Marvel Universe has different laws of physics than the real world. And this is all after we accept the fact that Spider-Man beating the living shit out of people doesn't kill them. He's strong enough to lift a helicopter, but when he's pummeling escaped convicts like they owe him money, they somehow survive? Yes, because, again, it's a video game. Also, he's not trying to kill anyone. And he's been Spider-Man for a number of years when the events of this game take place, so he knows his own strength well enough to hold back. It seems unlikely if you think about it seriously, but that's true about most video games. In the Arkham games, Batman also folded bad guys' bones like origami. Very well. I'm the origami killer. <laughs> origami. Yeah, thanks David Cage for permanently making that word hilarious to me. Without ever killing them somehow. Oh, and I guess now would have been a more appropriate time to bring up the whole Batman killing or not killing thing, but whatever. It's not a problem that diminishes the game in any form, and the same is true for Marvel's Spider-Man. All video games require players to suspend their disbelief at times. If anything, the problem is that Sony turned Spider-Man into a cop. Oh, so you are familiar with that article. I guess I should have covered this article first, and then that one second to make for a better segue, but I was already well into writing the script for this video when I noticed that, so it's too late. Oh well. In short, I think both you and that other author are taking a fictional video game about a young man who got bit by a radioactive spider, and now swings around New York City like Tarzan in a red, white, and blue leotard, fighting street crime and mostly animal-themed supervillains too seriously. My prescription is to sit back, relax, play the entire game at your own pace, and have some fun. And of course, now that I've condemned others for taking this very fun video game about a very silly comic book character seriously, I can end this video, right? I mean, it's not like I would ever take this game too seriously and read too much into it. <laughs> Thank you.
Okay, so maybe the lens with which I view this game has been altered by the current political climate we live in, where everything is divisive and almost all forms of media are politicized propaganda. There was once a time when I would have played this game and loved every minute of it, and wouldn't have given a second thought to the motivations of the creators in telling this particular story. But unfortunately, that time was long before the often cited current year, and of course, with my channel being what it is, what better way is there to address these things than to make a video about it. So, in addition to the articles I just commented on, I wanted to present my thoughts on politics in Spider-Man PS4 and give examples of parts of the game that I think may have had political intent. I'll start with the one that I'm the least confident about, and that has to do with the appearance of a certain character model. Now, I've had confidence issues with pointing out resemblance in the past. In my James Gunn video, I said that Mike Cernovich looked like Ryback and Ron Howard had somehow procreated. But while editing that video and looking for pictures for comparison, I felt less confident about the Ron Howard half of that equation. So, here I am again, about to make another remark about resemblance, and naturally I'm a bit reluctant to do so, because I fear no one else will agree with me. It has to do with the character model of Mayor Norman Osborn, who I instantly knew was played by an actor I recognized because he shares the likeness of his voice actor. But I couldn't quite place him. Looked him up on IMDb to find out the actor's name is Mark Rolston. I know him from a couple of the Saw films where he played an FBI agent, but he's been in a lot of things. He's no stranger to voicing comic book characters either, and was the voice of Deathstroke in Batman Arkham Origins and Batman Arkham Knight. But the thing is, his character model has reddish hair, consistent with the comics, but more realistic and business-like, and there's something about his face that I can't quite put to words. An odd texture that isn't quite the same as all the other characters. Almost like a bad spray tan or something. And his eyes are kind of squinting. Also, character-wise, he's a billionaire businessman who got elected to a political office. Does that remind you of anyone in real life? I mean, he isn't exactly wearing a red trucker hat with the words Make Manhattan Great Again on it, but I'd be lying if I said I didn't think of Trump every time I see Norman Osborn in this game. Maybe I'm crazy, but that's just what he reminds me of. Also, in a slightly less arguable but still uncertain potential reference to the same political figure, Fisk Tower reminds me a lot of a certain other tower with a rich man's name on the front. If not visually, then at least conceptually. Not to mention, I think it's in approximately the same spot, though perhaps not exactly, where Trump Tower is in the real New York City. Then again, I'm no expert on geography, even that of a city as full of memorable landmarks as New York City. But those are just superficial references to political things. There has to be more to it than that, right? Of course there is. I'm just building up to the more substantive stuff. For example, as you play through the game and swing around the city, you're treated to occasional broadcasts of a radio show hosted by none other than the former editor-in-chief of the Daily Bugle and the man with the biggest hate boner for Spider-Man, even more so than his villains. Yes, I'm talking about John Jonah Jameson Jr., who unfortunately is not voiced by J.K. Simmons in this game. But he rants and raves in increasingly angry and over-the-top ways about Spider-Man, and he puts forth all manner of conspiracy theories that he is creating the same criminal chaos that he appears to be fighting. Now, the only thing missing would be if, at some point in the game, J. Jonah Jameson gets banned from pretty much every social media platform for espousing said conspiracy theories. Yeah, I'm saying that in this game, they turn J. Jonah Jameson into Alex Jones. In fact, one of the things that J. Jonah Jameson makes a conspiracy theory about, which ends up pretty closely resembling Alex Jones's infamous I don't like them putting chemicals in the water that turn the friggin' frogs gay rant, is the next thing I'm I wanted to talk about. One of the many side missions involves Oscorp research stations scattered throughout the city and narrated by audio recordings of Peter Parker's best friend, Harry Osborn. Basically, Harry's deceased mother was also involved in science, but more so in an environmental sense. So, most of the research station missions involve stopping some kind of environmental disaster, which, of course, reminds me of the debate on global warming and climate change. And the game is clearly on the side that it's a problem that needs to be fixed. And I agree with that message. I just don't know if it's a message that I want shoved down my throat in my entertainment. Although, an argument can be made that this particular game doesn't really beat you over the head with it. And besides,
sides, it's the artist's right to put whatever messages they want into their art. I'm just saying it's possible to make a superhero game that's mostly apolitical. For proof of this, see the Batman Arkham franchise. But there are some other little things that are also small parts of the game, and arguably are not the ham-fisted messages that they could conceivably be interpreted as. For example, there are several Mary Jane Watson stealth sections where you play as Peter Parker's longtime love interest and sneak around, avoiding detection from bad guys with guns. During one particularly egregious example of this, Spider-Man is actually in the room with you, and you're still just sneaking around, and you have to lure the bad guys away from one another and tell Spider-Man when it's safe to swoop down and take down each guy quietly until the room is clear. It was this uniquely frustrating mission that caused me to temporarily be pissed off at the game itself and mockingly refer to it as Marvel's Mary Jane Watson. Anyway, the point I was trying to get to by telling you all of that was just that these missions have a bit of a feminist girl power kind of vibe to them, but the thing is, I'm not sure if that's just me spending years of my life arguing with terrible feminist arguments and seeing an agenda where maybe there isn't one, it could be that, or maybe it was the intention of the writers to send that kind of message. I can't know for sure. Again, those are all very speculative examples, and to be fair, that's all that I'm claiming to be presenting here, but before I wrap this video up, I think it's time to get to the two most potentially interesting political parallels I've come up with so far as it pertains to the story of this game. The first is is maybe a bit more obvious. You see, there's this terrorist attack that does massive amounts of structural damage, as well as striking fear into the hearts of the people of New York City, and is followed by a massive increase in security and militarizing of the police. Now, I ask you, does that sound like any real-life event that may have just recently had its 17-year anniversary? Yeah, I'm talking about 9-11. And this time, it wasn't a few Muslims with 747s, it was a seemingly endless number of Asian men in suits and traditional Chinese masks, carrying guns and wielding some kind of mysterious energy power. Also, I think I remember seeing suicide bomb vests, which happens to also be a staple of Islamic jihadist terrorism. But maybe I'm being too negative. Not that this last parallel isn't going to be as well, I just had to make that joke and didn't have a better idea for a segue. Something that I made a joke about when I first started the game actually makes a bit of sense when you think about it. You see, the game opens up on a mission where you take down the kingpin of crime, Wilson Fisk, unfortunately not played here by Vincent D'Onofrio, all while learning the gameplay mechanics in cleverly integrated tutorials. After completing this mission, there's a cutscene where Fisk is being arrested, and he claims that he was the one keeping order in the city, and that within one month, Spider-Man would wish to have him back out doing just that. Naturally, Peter makes some kind of quip to the effect of, yeah, 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 whatever, but with some kind of joke or nerd reference worked in. Also, naturally, the city descends into chaos shortly thereafter within the events of the game. So, knowing that would be the case, I made a joke to a co-worker about the entire game being just one big metaphor for the war in Iraq. And after having played the game all the way through, I can't really say that anything in the game contradicts that. I mean, there's not a perfect parallel for every aspect of it, but if you think of Wilson Fisk as being Saddam Hussein, the rest of the game's villains as being various terror groups like Al-Qaeda and ISIS, and just the general destabilization of the city as being like that of the whole region of the Middle East, it's not such a far-fetched comparison. The major difference being that Spider-Man is able to deal with most of the damage done by the other villains and round up most of the criminals, so him arresting Kingpin isn't quite the colossal clusterfuck of a mistake that the war in Iraq was. Also, I don't think it was done under false pretenses because Wilson Fisk actually is a criminal, as opposed to the mysteriously vanished weapons of mass destruction. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying Saddam Hussein wasn't an evil dictator, I'm just saying that taking him out destabilized the region and caused a lot more trouble than it was probably worth. But the Spider-Man PS4 game seems to go with the message that it is better to live in a free society where there is potential for great chaos than it is to live under the thumb of a tyrant who keeps order, at least in the game's story. The developer's opinion on the Iraq War may in fact be the opposite of that. Again, I can't know for sure. But despite any petty gripes I might have about political messages or missions where you're forced to play as someone who isn't the title character and sneak around in stealth sections, this game is excellent. I didn't want to give too much away in this video, so I'll just give a basic review of it here before I end it. The game is visually stunning. The gameplay mechanics are fantastic 
and flow naturally. The game map is a fairly accurate depiction of Manhattan, and although there are some artistic liberties taken with it, they're all creative and fit the universe well. There are tons of great side missions to keep you occupied between story missions, and the way I play is to do all of them as soon as they become available, and save the story missions until I have no more side missions left to do. There is an awesome cast of characters, including most of Spider-Man's rogues gallery, which is second only to Batman's, in my opinion. And there's at least one character who I never quite expected to see a modern take on, because I've previously only seen him in the LEGO Marvel games as a LEGO minifigure. There are tons of cool alternate suits, each with their own unique abilities associated with them, but you can mix and match your suit's appearance, main ability, and three mods however you like. There are lots of different collectibles that award you different tokens that you can use to buy new suits and upgrades, so there's an incentive to find and collect them. The game works in Peter's penchant for photography pretty well. The city feels alive, and the NPCs act a lot like real people. The characters are great, and best of all, the story is fantastic and compelling throughout. I can't recommend this game enough, or say enough good things about it. So, if you haven't already, by all means, go out and buy it. It's well worth the money. Anyway, I think that's all I have to say about the Spider-Man game and the potential political themes in it, or at the very least, it's all I have to say about it in this video. I'm sure I could talk about this game for hours, but I'll spare you all the boredom of doing that here, since I've already talked about it for quite a while. So, if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, I always appreciate that, and I'd like to do more videos like this in the future, since it's more fun than just talking about social justice bullshit all the time. At least this way, it adds an element of talking about a piece of art and or entertainment that I personally enjoy. But, if you didn't like it, I am thinking about making some more serious or intellectual videos in the future. The only thing is, the biggest idea I have would require a lot of time to do research, pull clips, and plan out how to structure the video in a way that would be unlike any other video I've ever done before. And I'm not sure if I have that kind of time, what with the working six days a week thing. Also, I don't remember if I've said it in a video yet, but I've been feeling the YouTuber burnout lately, and just haven't felt motivated to make much in the way of content. Anyway, if you like my content, please make sure you're subscribed and click the bell icon to get notified whenever I get up off my lazy ass and make a new video. Follow me on Twitter and BitChute, I occasionally shitpost on the former, and upload my videos several hours early to the latter. And last but not least, if you really like my content and want to motivate my aforementioned fat lazy ass to make more of it, please consider supporting me on Patreon. It's literally the only way I can make money off of my content, because I don't make videos often enough to meet the view time requirement. Any amount you can spare, even if it's just a dollar a month, would be greatly appreciated. As always, thank you for watching, I'll catch you next time, stay great apes! Spider cop, spider cop, kills some thugs with a spider drop. Slings a web, saves their ass, beats up thugs, gives them sass. Look out, here comes the spider cop. Is he cool? Listen guys, he makes Yuri roll her eyes. His own life, he narrates, while he tries to sound like Tom Waits. Hey there, there goes the spider cop. In the day or the night, He's always fighting crime With superhuman might Punching guys all the time Spider cop, spider cop Half man, half spider, but all cop He's the king of police bugs Forgot to mention he really hates drugs To him, it's always cops and bandits Getting too old for this shit Crime fighting spider cop